so many years later? 1958, I, I got into the Tapas Union, and right from the word go, there was a cargo that came into the Belfast Stars called asbestos. And asbestos was gold dust because it had to be used by the shipyard for making ships, for doing all the lagging of the ships. And we were the only port here in Belfast. There was either us or the Cross Channel, and the Cross Channel never touched it. We were the one that took it out all the time. And right from 1958 to 1984, I was working on loading asbestos. Mm. Thousands upon thousands of tons came out of the Belfast docks. And we had never, at any time, any protection at all. We were never even given as much as a paper mask. Now, my health, uh, after I left the docks in 1984, I took sick a couple of times in 2001. I went to the Mother Hospital. The doctor there diagnosed me after a six, six or seven tests, MRI scans. He diagnosed me with having asbestosis. I asked him what was that, I didn't even know. And he said to me, did you ever work with a, a, a commodity at the dash called asbestos? He says, of course, with that for years. He said, and me, has ever given any protection? Nothing, I said. I've never, never given nothing. Or I've never told, never told him it's dangerous. He said, well, Arthur, you should have been told that because this stuff was well known and well documented all over the world as a dangerous commodity. Well, I, I explained him that or you didn't, never told us, our employers never told us, and there was people at the dock called the factory inspector. They were employed by the government to look into dangerous cargoes. They never even told us. The impact of that must have been great, particularly because you were a boxer. I mean, a sportsman through and through. Um, you were a professional boxer at some stage in your, in your career as well. I mean, it must have been a devastating blow to find out that you were suffering from a lack of asbestosis. Well, I walked into the hospital that morning in 2001 expecting the doctor to tell me I have cramps, I have pains in my stomach, I have such and such, but I walked out after about six hours in the hospital. I went home. I couldn't believe what the doctor told me. His exact words to me was, Arthur, there's nothing we can do for you. Nothing at all? Nothing at all we can do for you, only help you along the way. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Like after all, I was fit all my life, never drank, and I never smoked. As you said, I was a professional, amateur professional, mm -hmm. all told about 254 fights. And then they were told that there's nothing you can do. Just go home and prepare yourself, he says. And I attended the Mother Hospital right from that time, right, I would go twice a year up for tests and blood tests and you name it, but never give me nothing to cure because there's no cure for the sickness. And that happened right up till 2007. Mm -hmm. I was to go to court for compensation. Two months before I was to go to court, my solicitor phoned me up and said, Arthur, I want you to go and see another doctor in the city hospital, a fellow called Dr. Richard Shepherd and a Dr. John Lawson. Well, I says, well, what's the use of me going to see him, another doctor, when my own doctor here is calling himself an asbestos specialist and he was supposed to be the top man in Northern Ireland, a fellow called Dr. Joe Kidney of the Matter Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I argued my point against it because I thought it was stupid me going to see another doctor when I'm already attending one for nearly seven years. But I went over to see this man in the city hospital. About half past four at night it was. And I made the way over. He came out of the office to see me. He said, hello. I said, Mr. Offrey, you see Dr. Shepard? He says, I'm Dr. Shepard. I thought this man was a drunkard. He looked very shabby, shabbily dressed, clothed. So he took me into his wee office. He, on the office, on the desk of the office was a pile, a big pile of papers. I noticed straight away my name was on top of it, and the Mother Hospital, and Dr. Joe Kidney's name was all on them. So if I put two and two together, that was the files from the Mother Hospital. Mm -hmm. And I told the doctor, I said, Doctor, I'm sent over here by my solicitor, uh, Michael Hollywood, of the Antimood, to have uh, a full independent examination on an MRI scan. 
He just shook his head to me and said, no, you're not beginning any of them. I can live with your friends. I uh, know what's wrong with me from these friends. So he was going to look at me without even examining me, mm. taking the word of another doctor. So I said no more, and I sat there for about 10, 15 minutes, watched him go through the things, he never spoke to me at all. I said, Doctor, well, this, is a, this, this is a waste of time. Waste of my time and a waste of your time, by the way. You'd be getting paid about five to six hundred pounds for seeing me. I came over here with intentions. My solicitor told me an independent examination, a full examination, and it's gone so that your conclusion and Dr. Joe Kidney's conclusion would stop in my case. Mm -hmm. But apparently you're not even examining me. He said, no. I said, end of story. The, mm -hmm. This meeting is over. And I got up to walk out. And he said, Mr. The only two questions he asked me was, Mr. Murphy, did, have you any, ever had any dealings with birds? Well, I know myself, anybody with birds, if they have a bad chest. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I never had pigeons in my life. And the, only, the other question he asked me was, I thought it was diabolical, uh, do you suck grapes? Suck grapes? Do you suck grapes? That's the exact words that man asked me, do you suck grapes? I looked at him, I was disgusted with him, for mm -hmm. me sitting there and I, almost 15, 20 minutes maybe. And there was a windy behind him. And I said to myself, if I don't take myself out, he's going through that window. Because I was really disgusted. And I walked out and left him. And I phoned my Michael mm -hmm. Hollywood the next morning, he's my solicitor, mm -hmm. from the autumn road. I said, Michael, you sent me over there on a way goose chase. This fella didn't even examine me, done absolutely nothing to me. Yet you are paying him money for that. Three months later, I was going to court. And I, another thing, the strange thing that happened between this court case, I got in contact with the Lord Chief Justice of Brian Kerr yeah. about my case because it's been on too long. It's almost seven years. And all the people I've been speaking to in the shipyard were settled in two years. Mm -hmm. The Lord Chief Justice said to me, Arthur, uh, you were there 10 court, so on three different occasions, and you never appeared. And I said, excuse me, I just told him face to face with this man, mm -hmm. a gentleman. Yeah. I said, your honor, I was never informed at any time to appear in court. He said, you mean your solicitor never got in contact with me? I said, spot on. He said, well, now your next case, I said, I know of a case coming here on June the 13th, 2007. Mm -hmm. He said, yes. I said, well, I've been there. And I was there, and that morning I arrived early. I was, e I was, I was eager to get into court to, to, to talk to these people. I sat on the outside of the court. The court wasn't, my case wasn't to half past nine. I got there a quarter nine. Sitting there at nine o'clock, Michael Hollywood with two barristers walked in. And when he seen me, the man, the blood drained from the man. Mm -hmm. And his first question he asked me was, what are you doing here? I couldn't know. I said, what am I doing here? I said, the Lord Chief Justice told me my case has to be heard this morning. And I was to be heard three or four other times and I was never told. Once I mentioned the Lord Chief Justice named to him, mm -hmm. he panicked. Another man stood beside him, came with a, a small lawyer with a wig on him and black robes. He came and uh, wanted to shake hands with me. He says, hello, my name is Charlie Hill. I'm your barrister. I said, I don't know you fella from Adam. I've been on this case for nearly seven years and this is the first time I've ever seen you and you're saying you're my, my barrister. The old fella's name is Peter Dorn. Mm -hmm. And I was shouting that loud because I'm not a soft talker. Everybody in the court heard me and there was a couple of policemen. I thought they were going to come over and ask was there something wrong. And these three, Michael Hollywood, Charlie Hill and Peter Dorn, see, they ushered me into a small office just off the courts. And they were talking to me there. He said, you know, Mr. Rod, Charlie Hill, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in a space to basically see, he says. I said, well, I thought by the closure of where you were barrister, a lawyer, are you a doctor as well? And I was all down hell after. Mm -hmm. He said to me, no, uh, I'm here to tell you that you don't have osteoporosis at all. The doctor in the model hospital made a mistake. <laughs> I says, and how do you know that? I said, where's the confidentiality act between me and my doctor? Surely I should have been the first to be told that. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, it doesn't matter who tells you that uh, uh, you have no case anyway and that we're here to tell you. I said, you're here to tell me. I said, I didn't get a letter from my solicitor 
I wouldn't have been here high without knowing. And I looked at the helm and I looked at Mega Hollywood. And Mega Hollywood had cut it out, out and out, opened the door and threw the wall. He turned the cull of a corpse. And I was going to speak to him. I looked at him and said to say, What's happening here, guy? No, nothing. Mm. And uh, Charlie Hill, I said, Let me tell you, something here smells corruption. He says, What do you mean by that? I said, Do you want me to spell that out for you? I said, Let me tell you, I'm going to end the court now to see the judge. And I'm going to tell him there's collusion here somewhere. I can't put my finger on. I said, You, you, and you are sacked. I don't want you near me. And I walked straight out. And by that time, my name has been called to go into court. Mm -hmm. I went on straight into the court myself. I was a judge, Paddy Cochran. He was doing the case. Mm -hmm. And I went straight up. And them three came after me, running after me, like, sheep, like wee dogs. Mm -hmm. I was straight up to the judge. I said, Excuse me, Your Honor. And I explained the whole case to him. He couldn't believe it. He looked at them three as if to say, Is this one telling the truth? And he said to me, Arthur, well, all I can do is put your case in ambience until you get a proper diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So I said, Your Honour, that'll do me fine. And then three was going to walk out again. And I said, Excuse me, Your Honour, they're all my friends, these people have. And he called them back. And they came back like three wee sheep, three wee sheep dogs. Mm -hmm. And he took the friends off them and gave them to me. And I took them home. What? And I took them home, out of court, after second number three. And you're still battling today, 2011? 2007, I went to the street, uh, up to Joe Kidney, in the mother hospital, and I went straight to him. The only other time you see, you can't see Joe Kidney, you have to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. I gave him a title, the secretary took my message, she relayed it to him, straight up, and I spent three hours with him in the mother hospital. He said, Arthur, the, the report he got from Shepherd says, I have no asbestosis at all. I said, well, Joe, can you tell me how this man can diagnose me without putting a hand on me? It's impossible, I said. So because of his report, mm -hmm. Dr. Joe Kelly had a, had, a, had a go along with them because he all worked for the same trust. And I had to go to my, my uh, daughter, Nigel Dodd, my MP, and from that time right up till 2009, that's two years, we had to fight them. To be sent to England to see a specialist in England. And they, they paid my fare in all the world. I would have been seen the specialist in England. Within the space of about two hours, I got diagnosed with asbestosis. This is one of the top men in England, Dr. Mm -hmm. Chris Warburton from Liverpool, A3 Hospital. And he says he can't understand how these people couldn't diagnose me because all the symptoms were there. And working 27 odd years with asbestos, it's stripped for what he says. You're determined to take it right to the, to the end again? Well, I'm up, in, I'm up in court again very, very soon, and I'm bringing over Dr. Chris Warburton as my witness, and he's prepared to come over. So I'm looking forward to that case. Okay. And once I get that case over, I'm going to strip back into court again, and I'm taking those five corrupt doctors to court along with three corrupt barristers and two corrupt solicitors to let the public know what's happening here. Mm -hmm. There's also another individual that you want to